Hello everyone, my name is Raven, and welcome to Raven Gaming Labs, and welcome to my 16th GZ Doom tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the PK3 slash zip format to import textures into GZ Doom. Now, one thing to note about this tutorial before we get started is that um, this tutorial, since it does use the PK3 format, is pretty much only meant for GZ Doom. If you're using the original, uh, you know, Doom format because you're making, you know, well, games or modifications uh, using the original uh, Doom engine, then kind of this tutorial won't work because we're not using WAD files and WAD files have to be set up a little differently. Okay, so uh, the first thing you're going to need is Slade. If you haven't watched the very first video, you'll need to grab Slade. So there's a link in the description as always. And you go to downloads, and then you'll grab whichever one is most preferable for you. And then optionally, you can grab uh, PNG out and PNG crush. Uh, there's a link to both of these. These will help you compress your uh, image a little bit further, saving some file size and all that good stuff. And I will cover um, all of that you know, later on. And then the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need an actual texture of some kind to work with. And I have a folder filled with textures. But for the sake of this, um, I'm just going to go to ambient CG. These are all PBR textures. Um, and I do know that there are some PBR shaders floating around, but we're just going to be using the diffuse texture from one of these so i'm actually just going to grab this one right here it's called grass zero one and just for the sake of saving some ah you know what let's just go on ahead and grab the png version here okay and while that's downloading let's go over to the last link here called textures now another thing you'll note you'll probably notice i grabbed the 1k version not the 8k version or anything like that and the reason for that is is Come on, it is it's Doom. We work with really small textures. We we don't need all of that. Okay, so uh, the textures page on the ZDoom wiki explains a lot about how everything works, um, the different types of settings that you can have for your uh, you know your your textures file. It also explains the differences between uh, you know, WAD files and PK3 files and uh, texture patches and all sorts of really fun stuff. So there's a link to this in the description. I highly recommend that you read it. We're eventually, I'm going to do this over a series of several videos. So we're not going to be, you know, covering literally everything. Like patches are very, like virtual textures, for example, are a really nice way of, you know, using one texture, but making like walls and all sorts of other stuff out of a single texture. Thus, saving file size we are not gonna you know cover all of that okay so if you downloaded um these two utilities here uh png out and png crush i just made a folder called png inside of my slate directory and i just threw them both in there renamed them and off you go okay so the next thing we're gonna want to do is i am just going to copy out the grass zero one and i'm just going to call this grass one well try to call it grass one and i'm going to move it off screen here and i'm going to open up gimp and then i'm going to throw it into gimp and one of the first things i'm going to do is go to image and so one way to really save uh space is to use a indexed image which can have up to 256 colors you can also predefine palettes and so forth. Uh, if you're only going to be working in true color, which you know means images can have thousands upon thousands of colors, then you don't need to do this. But you can actually mix and match. Like even if you're using true color, if you know that whatever you're working on is only going to have 256, you can put it in here. It's a great way to save space because uh, it makes the PNG even smaller. However, you do have to go down to precision and convert it to an 8-bit integer. And now I can go to index and I can tell it to generate up to 255 colors. And it might take a second. And as you can see, 
it looks pretty much roughly the same. And then we go to right click and go to layer and then transparency and we will remove the alpha channel because we don't need it. I mean, it's, a, it's grass, it has no transparency. It doesn't need one. And last but not least, we're gonna scale the image down to 64 by 64. And I think I'll just use no interpolation just to get that original crisp doom look. And there you go, we have our very beautiful grass texture here. And then we'll do a control shift E. And I'm just going to overwrite the grass one.png and we'll replace it. And you can put this anywhere. And then you can disable and turn off all of this stuff because we don't need all this extra metadata. It's just waste in space. And then we'll hit export. And now you'll notice our six megabyte image is now a mere five kilobytes, which is quite the packing there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new archive and we have several different types of archives. And we're going to use the zip archive format, hit create. And now we're going to right click and hit new directory textures. And we will just put this in here. And now the cool thing is we can just right click graphic and the patch table and all this other stuff is um, what I was referring to earlier uh, for the original Doom. But we also have a texture X and um, da -da -da, this archive does not, do you wish to create or import a texture definition? Uh, yes. And we wanna use the Z Doom textures format. We'll hit okay. And now if we open this, you'll see that there's <clears throat> nothing in here. So we have to go back to graphic because it had to make it and we'll add it. Ah, I bet it's locked because it was open. Okay. And now we can open this and I really wish, there we go. And it has just the patch and the name of the patch, which you can change here. Like the texture name and the patch name can actually be different. And then we'll just hit control S to save. And we have a lot of different formats here. And we're going to choose the PK3 format. And we're going to go back out to GZ Doom. And in my WADS folder, I'm going to call this uh, Custom Textures. And we're going to hit Save. And now for the last part, we're going to go to Edit, Preferences. And then we go down to Graphics and PNG. And then we can add our PNG out and our PNG Crush. You can just click this and then navigate to wherever you save them. And I, again, I prefer, you know, putting it with Slade as it makes the most sense. And there are several ways you can just select it and then you can click this tool here and then it'll run. And as you can see, it knocked off <laughs> 0 0.1 kilobytes. This was already a pretty well optimized PNG, but hey, you know, once you have a couple hundred images, it all starts to add up and then we'll hit control S there. And now what we can do, now that everything is saved, we will open up uh, the ultimate Doom Builder. And I'll move it over here in just a second. Ah, good, it's for an update. We'll do that later. And we'll open up Map01. And then we'll click Add a Resource, a PK3 file. We'll go into our WADs. And inside of here, there's a custom textures.pk3. We'll double click that and we'll hit OK. And then we'll hit OK. At least one resource doesn't exist. Ah, right, I tested it before. And we're good to go, we'll hit OK. And now we'll just wait a second as it runs through. Now, what if you were, what if, what if you already had, uh, you know, um, a GC2 open? Well, it's actually kind of easy, just go to edit, map options and then you hit add resource and it's right there you can also remove it and then add it back and as long as you haven't changed anything here uh you know you're you're you'll have to reapply textures and also i really don't recommend it but um yeah anytime you add new resources you're gonna have to uh restart the ultimate doom builder which is always super super fun and then we'll hit okay and it's building everything now Okay, so where do we want to put this most beautiful texture? Uh, let's put it in here, actually. 
So I'm just going to select this, or you can just right click it, and then we will pick it, and then we'll go down to custom textures. And you'll notice that we have a textures folder, and then we have an actual textures folder, and um, they're the same. Uh, but again, you know, you can you can predefine like you know you have flats, for example. Um, and you have all of this lovely stuff. You can assign all this stuff based in the patches and textures. Uh, and we'll just select our grass and we'll hit okay. I'm gonna hit H to turn off the blinking there because it's kind of annoying. And you'll see that this texture actually tiles relatively well. There's a little bit of tiling here where you can see, um, but it looks like grass. And uh, let's test it out now in the engine, like, you know, running around. And we'll just zip on over. And there you go. As you can see, there's our there's our grass texture looking all proper. Uh, it's got a bit of shading there going on because of the different light levels in this room. But there you go. And that's it. That's how you import a custom texture. And wall textures need to be tall. So we will cover that in the next on the ways to create a wall texture properly. All right, and thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Raven Gaming Labs. Thanks to all the members and viewers who make RGL possible. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you can be notified. If you want to become a member, hit the join button or link in the description below. Members get early access to videos, member exclusive content, and more. As well, don't forget to join our awesome community over at Discord. Y'all have a good one.